The giggle was such a momentous episode in Doctor Who that you really couldn't do a decent review of it all in one video, and we didn't. And in fact, held back the idea of by generation because uh, we uh, really need an entire video to discuss that. So we're going to do it here right after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. And some people say, well, by generation has changed the entire canon of Doctor Who. Well, I don't agree with that. Doctor Who has never really had a canon. Uh, the fourth Doctor could levitate. No other Doctor could do that and has ever tried ever since. Uh, the idea of how the Master is regenerated uh, past his 12th regeneration has never been explained, or how he has uh, found that he could subsist in a ring or a tooth or who knows what. Uh, so uh, he's just too good to get rid of, and despite the fact that they do everything they can to get rid of him. Same with the Daleks. The Daleks have been utterly obliterated two or three times and yet keep coming back. So let's not worry about canon as such. But let's talk about what this means for the perpetuation of previous doctors. And, and, and this is something, uh, in my opinion, is something that fixes a problem that we've had before. Uh, in the early time, we have the three doctors. This was under when John Pertwee was a doctor. There were the three doctors, and they had uh, William Hartnell and, and, and Troughton uh, that were there to uh, be all there at the same time. Well, uh, the way they said was it's an unusual crossing of timelines uh, that can only happen under incredible circumstances. But the three of them uh, work together and do something, and then they all go on their way. And they did this again with the, uh, the fifth doctor with the five doctors. They did another one called the two doctors. And in the newest in the in new who uh, they have had uh, David Tennant uh, visit with Matt Smith during the 50th anniversary uh, they have had a uh, David Bradley standing in for William Hartnell as the first doctor that has been uh, with the Capaldi doctor and also uh, with 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 Jody now, so what we have here is just a way to kind of legitimize this. And, of course, I forget also uh, uh, Tom Baker appears as the curator in the 50th anniversary episode. And this is all uh, – the problem we've always had is whenever we bring these doctors together is obviously the previous doctor looks older than he did when he was in his own series. And that's uh, increasingly becoming a problem if you want to bring back um, – People like Peter Davison and Colin Baker, who look considerably older than they did when they were playing their parts, uh, with you know reasonably so, and and even David Tennant looks a little older than he did. And so, what what do you have here when you want to do these kind of things? Uh, you're you're stuck having to explain this. And the last time that they were in Power of the Doctor, uh, they had to explain that they were in some kind of Time Lord purgatory or something in order to show them as their older selves. Now. Uh, I've not seen this, but I've seen little clips of the um, Tales of the TARDIS where they are bringing back uh, a couple of the previous doctors, Sylvester McCoy, uh, uh, Colin Baker, T uh, Peter Davison, and basically indicating that they have gotten older and that they exist in other timelines or something like this. So we've already kind of set the basis for this. And uh, while it wasn't completely explained there, it is here that uh, this idea of bi-generation allows uh, the doctors to exist all in the same plane and continue to age, where uh, David Tennant would have disappeared in regenerating to Shudi Gatwa, now he stays. Now, people have said, well, this is going to be a problem because he's just going to turn up everywhere, or they don't have any confidence in Shudi Gatwa to uh, carry the, the load. And I think anybody that saw uh, the episode would understand that Shudi does not uh, need any help. 
uh, he certainly has been able to uh, carry that show, even with David Tennant standing by. Uh, suddenly, he takes the first chair in it and uh, becomes the uh, the savior of the episode. So uh, I don't have any uh, any thoughts that uh, uh, Shooty is going to be immediately replaced because of bad press. I, I believe so far everybody has received him very well. But uh, where is Tennant going to be? Well, I imagine he's going to be like anybody would have been that was a former doctor that would come in on one of these three doctors, two doctors, doctor meets a doctor, time streams cross kind of thing, except now that they don't have to try to make up a way or explain away why they look older, or, or just not explain it and uh, kind of break the uh, uh, the illusion, honestly. So uh, I think that this is just kind of a useful way of of doing what they've already been doing. And it's kind of fun from time to time to see previous doctors, and so this gives us the opportunity where they can act against each other and insult each other over you know how they dressed or or things like that. And or how they acted or or things like that. So so I think it's a positive thing. This uh, uh, and and they finally just codified it uh, to the point that uh, this by generation allows them to meet each other. And for the most part, whoever's the latest doctor is going to be the doctor that has all the adventures. And from time to time, maybe you'll see one of the others or more than one of the others uh, come in and lend a hand for whatever reason. But as you can see, uh, I, I don't really think that this changes the character of the show uh, in a major way in in doing this. And I think it's kind of a clever gimmick uh, in order to. And of course, if they decide that, uh, and 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 they justify all of this is because of the toy makers tendency to alter reality into whatever you want it to be. And so uh, the doctor got some of that energy. I do have a little problem with being able to copy the TARDIS everywhere because uh, regeneration doesn't regenerate the TARDIS. So I don't know exactly why that is just going to be thrown in there, but uh, they all have to travel in something. So I suppose that uh, each doctor has his own TARDIS. And um, they, it looked like they were uh, trying to explain that with this um, uh, in Tales of the TARDIS with this uh, uh, jumble of a set that uh, took uh, parts of previous TARDISes that, uh, uh, into one, which uh, they may use in the future. Who knows? So uh, that's my take on this. I hope that you um, will subscribe to the channel if you like. Uh, next week, we're going to uh, talk about some of the speculation for the Christmas special coming up uh, and uh, what they've released so far, telling us uh, about the characterizations and about what type of Dr. Uh, Shudi is going to be and uh, how they find um, uh, uh, Ruby Sunday and things such as this. We'll talk about that next week. So uh, until then, thank you for joining us and don't go far.